This show was almost part public service announcement as well, because it mixed history and educational elements into its plot. The dangerous aspect of sailing across the Atlantic is explored. And a lot of ancient cities are mentioned or seen. We have the Incan city of Machu Picchu, which was once inhabited. Ruins of Mayan cities are explored by the characters. Here's the Palenque ruins. And even the Nazca lines of the Peruvian desert are featured, which some theorize were used by aliens as a landing runway. And actually, that's what the Golden Condor uses them for on the show. To go along with the educational aspects of the show, originally, every episode ended with a mini documentary about the history and people of South America, usually related to what was shown in that episode's story. Other Mayan cities have been found, but they are always in the deepest and most inhospitable parts of the jungle. We can overlook that the guy narrating is also the voice of Mendoza, Gaspar, and just about every other character on the show, including Zia. Unfortunately, these were not shown on Nickelodeon, but maybe that was a blessing in disguise. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not one of the scariest guys you've ever seen. He looks like Willem Dafoe with a skin disease. If that's not enough, just look at this intro screen. You've got vultures picking on a carcass, a chubby armed lizard, and what the hell is going on here? You've got this scantily clad woman being forced down by these guys. Okay, maybe it is a little hot. Another cool thing about the Cities of Gold show is that it featured elements you'd find in adventure or RPG games. Finding hidden caves, having to solve puzzles to advance. Hey Polly, well, how about a salad or two? Cut down on the crackers. Avoiding booby traps. Secret passageways. And you had helpful characters that would give you hints along the way. To the west of the Pashamama Valley, the Urubus are afraid of that place and never go there. Are you sure that's where the Baskin Robbins is? As well as characters who provided gifts to help Esteban on his quest. My mirror? What good will that do for you? Say, check her out. She's not half bad. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the ending of each episode, when a short preview of the next installment was featured. A female announcer would narrate the events in the next episode, which would excite you enough to get up at 6 a.m. the following Saturday morning to watch. The others are on a jungle path when suddenly two strangers appear. Yes, I still remember that voice. Calm voice. Be sure to see the next episode of The Mysterious Cities of Gold. It's a voice that wraps you up in a blanket and makes you hot cocoa after you've shoveled snow all morning. It's that motherly voice that sends you off to school and says, have a great day, Patrick. That leaves you feeling all warm inside as you sit down on the, the bus. And Nothing could go wrong. The then Greg, waterfall. an eighth grader, calls Make you to sure come you sit with him in the back of the bus. The mysterious city wow, an eighth grader wanting to talk to you? How exciting. The golden so you stroll to the back and talk to Greg, to who's interested in seeing the baseball card collection you've but brought Gomez for show and, and tell that day. You're so happy to show someone the nice cards you bought with your allowance money. Ah, what a great life. The cities of gold, show and tell, baseball cards. A kid couldn't be Make happier sure when he gets home from school. The then your father, sharing your excitement, Esteban looks at your box of cards. Huh. It has That's a strange. String keeper in its beak Where's that Don Mattingly rookie the card? City of gold is Didn't you also have a Daryl Strawberry? What happened Suddenly, to that Cecil Fielder tremble, card? And a violent what? Destroys the Where? Whole city. Slowly your emotions unravel. My, my baseball card collection. Make sure you watch what the happened to all, the all my good cards? Your father sternly lectures you about being careful and not losing your possessions. You cry yourself to sleep that night and feel ashamed of yourself for the next month. In the years to come, the pain eases, but never entirely leaves. You carry a grudge with you for the next 20 years. You think of one person, Greg. That's right, Greg! You think I forgot? I was only eight! You f***ing... What kind of person steals baseball cards from an eight-year-old? Eight! 
I swear to fucking God, I'll find you one day, and when I do, you'll wish you never pocketed that Howard Johnson card. You want to collect baseball memorabilia? Huh? How about I take a signed Kevin McReynolds bat and stick it so far up your fucking ass that it comes out your mother fucking belly button? An eight-year-old! An innocent little kid! I hope you burn in hell, you for son of a... With him on board so yeah, Arzia, that's what the ending of each episode kind of reminds me of. A mysterious man who they say is only interested in gold. Like I stated in the beginning, this cartoon was a serial, so it has a definite beginning and end. Yeah, that condor might be nice to look at, but just imagine the insurance premium. <laughs> oh, car insurance joke. <laughs> Our heroes, the Spanish and the Olmecs, all race to find the City of Gold, near the conclusion of the story. Tao and Esteban have to come to the aid of Zia, who has been kidnapped by the wild cheek hair man. Try to appear a little less enthusiastic about bashing these guys' skulls in. So Esteban and Zia meet this strange guy in a gold mask, who explains that the fate of the world and the cities of gold are in their hands. The destiny of the cities of gold shall be in the hands of two children. Oh, literally in their hands. The amulets. Oh, clever. So finally, after 37 episodes, 18 hours, we see Which are promptly destroyed. But after all, it really is the journey that matters, not the destination. Right, guys? So there's a big happy send-off with everyone at the end of the show. Goodbye, all. Stay happy and good luck. Tao, Zia, ready? On our way to great adventures. And those little rascals get in the golden condor and fly off in search of the other cities of gold that happen to be mysterious. Maybe. But my children, let your hearts be not saddened. The story might not be over. In 2011, a new Mysterious Cities of Gold series is planned. And from the creators of the original show. Yay! Yay. So in closing, just why is the Mysterious Cities of Gold an underappreciated gem of a cartoon? Well, today, most cartoons for kids are shallow pieces of fiction with one-dimensional characters that insult not only the intelligence of adults, but the very children the show is aimed at. This cartoon did not do that. Besides having very good animation and a great plot, the Cities of Gold featured fleshed-out characters with backstories, solid character development, and a great appreciation for history and other cultures, facets almost never seen in cartoons for children. Encapsulating all these qualities, it appeals to the ideals of intelligence, personal integrity, respect, and enduring friendship. Unlike so much else in entertainment, the mysterious cities of gold upholds human dignity. <laughs> oh man, I almost believed that myself. No, oh, what, what I meant to say was, this show rocks. Seriously, it kicks ass. Goodbye. Until next time. Which way do we fly, Navigator? Follow the sun. Fly straight for the sun. Aye, aye. Fly straight for the sun, Golden Condor. That just about wraps it up. Thanks, everyone, for wasting your time with me today. Tune in next week as I delve into the fanboy battle of the century. Pinwheel or Eureka's Castle? Which was more dominant? See ya.
that friendly little bee playing oh so happily buzzing here and buzzing there busy buzzing everywhere Maya Maya the bee do 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 Maya Maya the bee